Okay. All right. And then we're uh, we're speaking about our investigation case number twenty nine zero zero four two nine nine. What I'll have you do, obviously, you're in a set of handcuffs right now in the Osceola County Sheriff's Office. If I could ask you, could you raise your right hand for me? Do you swear that everything that we're speaking about today is going to be the truth and nothing but the truth, the best of your knowledge, so I hope you got it? Yes. Okay. All right. Um, it's a very tragic event, very unfortunate event. Um, earlier this week, we were called to your home, obviously. I'm just doing this. All three of us have already spoken. Um, I don't know what they treated you for. I don't know if it was... Something to do with some liver, kidneys, or something like that, enzymes, or something? Um, um, Benadryl or just. Benadryl, okay. How do you feel right now? Regarding health wise? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I feel very sad and very upset that I'm still here. And yeah. Is there somewhere else you'd rather be? With my family? Yeah, on the other side. On the other side? Mm -hmm. Okay. And you do know. Your wife and, and children are deceased. Yes, and that's where I want to be. That's where you want to be. Okay. All right. Um, well, some, some some progress has been made has been made since uh, we last spoke. Okay. I um, I had the unfortunate event of attending their autopsies yesterday. Okay. Um, and we'll get to the kind of the the, the details on that. There are some um, some questions that I have based upon what I've witnessed yesterday and then what we've last spoken about so just to clear my mind and go through everything I'd, I'd, I'd like you to just start from the beginning if we can how we how we led up to where we're at right now okay 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 <sighs> for a while uh what about this side I uh, she began watching these videos, talking about the afterlife, talking about some Asian talk, talking about how families go to sleep. Slow down a little bit right now. I'm just having a hard time keeping up with you. I'm sorry. That's okay. Let's speak up. And in watching these videos and watching everything going on, she presented them to me. And I started watching them with kind of a, um, uneasy, like, yeah, whatever. And the more and more we watched, more and more, I gain an understanding that there is more than this life here. Mm -hmm. A higher, a higher um, level of consciousness. Mm -hmm. And then we started researching and researching and researching, and then we started finding more about the world is coming to the end, the apocalyptic end, and that a family is going to be separated and enslaved, and to better to avoid this. So all go together. Okay. You mean die together? Die together, that's okay. correct. Okay. Okay. So people know I've been chronically ill for a while. This has really appealed to her. And because it appealed to me also, because she wouldn't be in any pain, family wouldn't be separated. Mm -hmm. uh, there would be no more sorrow, no more heartbreaking, no more anything. It would be a, a salvation and everlasting life. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we kept doing our research, kept doing our research, kept doing our research. Uh, reading up things, meditating, and decided that, yeah, this should be a thing. This should be what we should do. Okay. We had sat down and talked with the boys and Zoe just on different things about, you know, death and the way the, uh, you know, what would happen if mommy died, you know, how would you feel, what happened when daddy died, what would you feel? And the consistent responses was like, we don't want you to die, we want to die with you. Okay. So when did you guys start talking to the children about this? Before January now. No, it was before Thanksgiving. Okay. And, you, and your wife first showed you these videos when? When she started watching them, or she first started showing them to me in April. April. Okay. And what was she using to watch these? Her Microsoft Surface laptop. And that's the one in the blue... Case? Yes. Okay. It's a flip. Yes. All right. All right. Go on. So you talk to the children. You talk to the children. Just get a general understanding of what they want to do one time. And they didn't want to live without us. Okay? We didn't put them back and say, we're going to die and, you know, leave you behind. But, you know, what would you do if mommy and daddy died? And we don't want to live without you. We don't want to live without you. Okay. In conversation with my wife, 
we didn't want to live without them either. We wanted to bring the whole family together and make it transverse together. So we were coming up with different things of how we could do this. We didn't know how we could do this um, because we're not violent people. Okay, not violent people at all. Um, first, we said, you know, uh, what if we, you know, we started reading different things? There's something came on TV about cough medicine. Okay, so could they have some cough medicine that I put them to sleep? Like overdose of cough medicine, just put them to sleep. Nice and by peaceful death. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so my wife made a pudding pie, pudding pie, jello pie, mm-hmm. um, froze it, it, nothing happened. What was in the pie? Uh, what was in the pie? Sleep, ease, so was, uh, different things with drama, how you do it. The stuff to put you to sleep. You said you have a medical background, is that correct? I have a medical, but not a chemical background. Not a chemical, okay. Yeah, I'm a physical therapist. Okay, so you don't have all the terminology and no, no. Is your wife? She's a physical therapist, no. Okay. We, so you, we look it up and... Where did you guys look this far? I was just fixing to ask, where did you guys do the research at? We went up and down the... Honestly, up and down the um, aisles of the uh, publics and asked the... Um, the, uh, the drug guy in Kenya. Pharmacist. The pharmacist, thank you. You know, what's something good to put you to sleep? You know, Joel fall asleep. When did you guys start doing this research? That started research... That started research before... Halloween, um, but I just intermittently tried to figure out what was going on. You know? mm-hmm. Okay. Um, when we found out that the best the best drug in the, the, to use was a drama. It didn't it's stuff in um, Benadryl. Um, that's the safest way to put it away. That's the safest way to put it. So it didn't work. Um, so we kept thinking, thinking, talking. And just researching different things, to, and finally, you know, we started researching, researching. And we said we're, we're just going to have to do some sort of examination. Okay, plead to death. Okay, and that's how they used to do it. We're in the back, but they used to do sacrificial things. You take a plead to death. Bleed to death. Oh, bleed to death. Sorry. Okay. That's okay. Okay. And so we started researching where would be the easiest. To stab to do one out so the kids can bleed to death, maybe in combination with the sleep drug. Okay. Okay. And that's how, how everything led up to be. Okay. So that's through research. You mm-hmm. guys have found, now you're saying you and your wife did this together? Mm hmm. Okay. Um, so in doing all the research and everything, but what? what how did we get to Monday morning? What, what, take me back to the holidays. When do you think the children died? That type of stuff. I'm still trying to remember when the children died. I can't put those pieces together. Yeah. And I'm sorry. No, no you're, you're fine. Um, we wanted the kids to stick around for the Christmas holiday concert because we didn't want to to point that. Did you guys celebrate Christmas Day? No. No, the kids were dead before Christmas. Because family is saying that they, s- we saying. Well, that they spoke with Megan the day after Christmas. Was Megan alive the day after Christmas? No, she died right under, under the day after the boys did. Right. I remember you saying that the other day. That's why I've, I've made contact now with your family mm-hmm. and with Megan's family. And so Megan's family is 99% sure that looking back through cell phone records and stuff that they spoke with her, not text message, they spoke with her the day after Christmas. No. And she said the children were sick. No. Okay, so when... So you're adamant that they died before Christmas? Yes. Okay. The children you said died 24 hours or so a day prior to Vegas? Correct. Okay. So let's let's go to the day of their death. How did this go down? Woke up at 11.30 at night. We set the, the, the alarm for 11.30 at night. 
and got up out of bed. And it was Zoe first. Okay. Meg walked into the room and she walked back into her room. So, 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 so you guys are sleeping in the master room, I'm assuming? Yes, my okay. friends. And the puppy. And the puppy, okay. Which boy was upstairs? Zoe was upstairs in her room. Okay. Alex was upstairs in his room. Tyler was asleep downstairs in the um, library room. And why again was he down there? The two of them were sick, so we kept them apart. Okay. All right, so, okay, go ahead, sir. It's okay. So we walked to the door, there's a loose door, Megan and I hugged and kissed, and pretty much we know what we need to do. Come back at me when we're done. So I went into Zoe's room. And it took me two or three hours sitting there because it was, it's a tough, but the everlasting salvation, the, the thought of that everlasting salvation was there and I needed to save her soul when her to be with us. Men kept coming in, what's going on? And I could have done it a little bit, it will be done a little bit. It's, it's getting past that, but I'm not right back now. The initial thought was to um, uh, to stab into the umbilicus uh, above the above the navel, so I could get the inferior vena cava or the abdominal aorta and be um, bleed out with no no time whatsoever. Mm-hmm. I know I tried. I don't know if I ever punched it. Um, I don't know if I did or not. I saw a little mark on her. But I, I don't know if I saw it, saw anything. But then she rolled and started swiggling, and I put my hand over her mouth and then put a pillow over top of her. So she went to, and she started to fade away. And I just held that until there was no motion left. So you didn't lay on her? I did lay on her when she lay on her belly. I'm sorry, I laid on her to keep her down, and I put the pillow on the top. Do you think you stabbed her or no? I don't know. I don't, and I didn't, I didn't see any, I didn't see anything. Okay. So how long would you say it took you to take her life? The whole motion? Yeah. Like from the minute I was sitting in there or from? I would say once, once you initially take action, okay. Did you have a knife with you? Yes. Which knife did you have with you? The small knife. Which is what color? Green. Okay, that's the green buck knife that you talked about. Knife, yes. Okay, all right. So you had that in her bed. Mm-hmm. Um, so how long from the time that you had the knife out to the suffocation until you think that she was deceased? Once, say ten minutes, fifteen minutes, right around there. It seemed like that late night took forever, so it's hard to really gauge on the time. Okay, and you said you used a pillow over her head. Yes. Was she face up or face down? She kept moving. I think she was was on her back with her head towards the the wall. So in that, in that way. So for ten minutes to fifteen minutes, you held a pillow over your daughter's head. Mm-hmm. How long did she kick and scream? Only for a couple of minutes. A couple of minutes. Mm-hmm. So like two minutes? Okay, I had no timer, but yes. But I'm just saying, yeah. minutes, look at that. And I just held, held it there for like a long time. As soon as? Did any other, did, did the other children hear her? No. Did your wife hear her? Well, I kept going up. I, I felt her in the, in the, opening the door to see what was going on, and shutting the door and walking back. Okay. Because you wouldn't, you could see the light coming in. Okay. So you think the sun was coming up, or was it just the light from the? It was the light from the, the hallway. A light bulb? Okay. Um, so now Zoe is deceased and what happens next? Walk out, sit with Megan in the room for a little while. How was the body? How do you mean? How, how was, did you, how was the positioning? How, where was the pillow? There was a pillow behind her and her hands were out to the side and I made sure the covers were on top of her. 
Just in essence, keep her warm. Does she have anything in her hands? No, I had put a rosary in her hands later on when I moved. When you moved the bodies? When I moved the bodies, yes. Okay, we'll get to that. And that was post rigor? Yes. Okay, okay. Sorry, we're going to have a little bit of I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm sorry. Okay, so Zoe's gone. You and Megan consult each other, whatever you guys have to do. Mm -hmm. And then what happens? We go into the Alex room. Alex room? Yes. The one that's to the staff in the upstairs. Well, upstairs. Okay. Yeah. And um, beforehand, we had talked about the aspect of she's got to hold his feet down. And I'll do, I'll do the staff. How old is Alec? 13. Okay, so he's the oldest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so what happens? We walk in. He's on his back. She holds, she's just sitting there holding his feet together, we're just in there, just eyeing each other, just gaining the confidence, I guess, you know. And I go to, I, I, I stab him, and he started kicking, I was trying to get up, and he kept rolling. So I ended up putting a, there was a pillow there, and I put a pillow in the back of his head so he wouldn't hit me with the back of his head. And I reached around with my hand and held his um, nose in his mouth. And he kept rolling and kicking and rolling and kicking, and then it eventually stopped. Where was Megan at? Megan left midway through there and went back to the room. Okay. Alright. How long would you say it took to kill an hour? That one I have no idea. It, did, it went quickly, uh, but I don't know. Okay. And there was blood and everything in his bed? In his bed, yes. Where did you stab where did you stab him? The, in the stomach, the same spot. That we identified as you know, where you could get the inferior vena cava. And, and what area did you call that? Inferior vena cava? No 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 no. You you called it earlier abdomen? Oh no, it's overall the abdomen. I think you used another term earlier. It was a. Uh, the one that you specifically spoke about, about the navel? Umbilicus. Umbilicus. Yeah, the umbilicus. Okay. Is that something that you researched in there, or you knew that from your your profession? So researched and learned ahead of time. Okay. Especially on a website called Quora.com. Let's spell that again. Q-U-O-R-A.com. Q-U-O-R-A.com. Yes. And what is Quora? If I go research this, what is it going to show me? Quora.com, you can ask anything they want. as people feedback. Uh, we happen to find it just by looking up knife uh, techniques. Um, and you have... All right. Okay. So, getting back to taking the life of Alec... And is it A L E K? Yeah. Okay. Alec, who is 13, mm -hmm. um, you're saying that you were solely responsible for his uh, life loss, his, his, murder. his murder. That's correct. Right. Okay. Your wife, at this point, was where? She had gone back to the room. Okay. Had you, had you given the children um, any medications prior to this night? I know you talked about the, the, the pie or whatever that your wife had made. Um, up until this point, were the children routinely given any type of medications? Are we giving some supplements or anything? Okay. But. Alright. So the night in question, they weren't under the influence of anything? They were just normal? They really normal. had the. Um, the um, what you call it, a pie or something like that? Pie? Yeah. That didn't, that, that didn't work that night. I don't, I don't remember if we gave him anything. Because that, that, those were two separate nights. We tried the pie the one night. We tried it before. Mm hmm But I, I don't remember if we tried anything the next night or not. So you didn't try to like, sedate him or anything like that prior to killing them? Did we sleep? Yeah, we must have given him the cough medicine again. 
We must, I'm sorry, we must have given the compliments again. Uh, I, I would just say that if you're trying to no, do the most of that, and you've done a lot of preparation, I mean, you right. started preparing this out of the diet, and started eating quite a bit, but then being strong, he kept moving, moving, moving. So then again, I had to get, like, put a pillow on top of my hand, and so he went really, really, really quick. So about uh, blood? I didn't see much blood because I had it covered up. Uh, like how much blood came out? I could feel the blood coming out because it was all over my hand. hand. But it was, it was bloody. No, I'm sorry, I didn't ask him. Um, Please. With the boys, which knife did you use? It was all the green knife for the kids. And the no. they, they were both buck knives, but the green knife was for the kids, and the one Megan used to uh, stab herself with. She also used the green one? Yes. Okay. Because we established the fact that I had to get a bigger knife for myself because my body mass is bigger to get the same thing. Okay. So Tyler, in which room downstairs was Tyler? Tyler was in the library room downstairs. Library room. So if I walk in the house, where we're at? You have to walk in the house. The first room on the left is the music room. The second room on the left is uh, the library room with the double French door things. Okay. And that's the room. Was he on a mattress? Was he... He was on the ma uh, mattress. And the mattress, my wife is very adamant about um, 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 mattress covers. So he was on top of the mattress cover and all his blankets and everything. Okay. Did that mattress stay downstairs? That mattress stayed downstairs. The cover and the everything else was brought up when it brought him up to the room. So obviously there should be if he if he bled or bled out, there should be signs of that on the mattress. The mattress was clean because of the um the the cover. What do you mean by the cover? By the mattress cover. Okay, which is cloth. I don't know what it is, but it doesn't allow fluid or anything to go through. Okay. Alright. When I moved him, I was able to undo the, undo the cover. So then some time later. Correct. Okay. Alright. So Tyler is killed. Who's in the room when he's killed? It's just me and Tyler. Megan is outside in the door. What is she saying at, at, during any of this? She's doing meditations. Was she drinking or consuming anything that would maybe... Not at that point, no. Bring her down? Because it's just a lot for a parent to go through. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot for a human being to go through, mm -hmm. let alone a parent. Okay. But we had salvation in mind. We had the greater... And that's... In I our honesty, it's a, we love our kids, and that's... It's sad. I, I got you. I understand. Okay. So, now all the children are gone. How long until the sun comes up? I don't know. It might be about 5 o'clock in the morning. Around that time. Was the sun coming up like part of a rule or anything like that? Because you mentioned it a couple times that Megan told you that they have, you have to do this before the sun comes up. Is there is there a reasoning behind that? I don't know. I don't know why the reasoning was behind that, but it had to be done before the sun came up. Yes. Okay. So it's nothing during your your research or investigations or anything like that that has nothing per mind. I don't know. It was on her side research or whatnot. I, okay. I was just told that they had to be done before the sun came up. Okay. All right. So they're all deceased. What do you guys do? To go up to the bedroom. Just start talking. How we want to work. You know, the kids are dead. What are we going to do now? What's going on? What's our next step? You know, what are we going to do? Do you mean this wasn't planned? It was planned, but it was like, just the dog. Did she want to go first? Oh, and then just said, you know, because you know, there was some discussion of her, me going first and her staying, staying last, her, her going first. She wasn't sure which one she wanted to do. So we decided that the, you know, the dog we went with the dog with us. So we, she held the back side of the dog down and they put the, um, they call them Mexican blankets, they're like these you know, blankets around and I was able to hold the, the knot in the, her snout and her um, nose closed and she went peacefully. Picked her up, put her in her bed. And then Meg was like, I want to go next, so I'm going to be done. And then what? So you just suffocated the dog? Yeah. So if there was any type of marks or anything like that on the dog, you wouldn't know anything about it? Okay. 
She was washing it, it was on her plate. And she's like, this has got to be done. It's taking too long. This is ridiculous. I'm like, shall we really do this? Go on, look at different other aspects to do this. How do you want to do this? She was, I want this ended now. I said, okay, what, what does that mean? She was, I want, to, I want you to take the pillowcase, put, put a pillow, put it over my head. I said, oh, I don't know if I can do that. And she looked at me, she goes, if you love me, you can do this. I want to be with my babies. So, you know, it's, and she just looked at me and she was just strong enough and you can do it. Okay. So, I said, why don't you take some more Benadryl? So, at least you're not going to fight me. And I'll do it. So, she took some more Benadryl. She took some more Benadryl. And maybe about 15 minutes later, I came back to her and I said, you still want to do this? And she talked to me like that, very far out. Yeah, to get it done. So how much Benadryl do you guys have? I don't know. Uh, did you have to go get any more during this time? So in that time? No. What, what other times did you have to? Uh, after that was done, for thought. How many bottles do you approximately think you had? We had two boxes of Sleepies, I know that, which is straight dimethyl, which is um, these little pills. Um, we had two things of Tylenol PM, I remember that, which is a great purple one. And I think we had two bottles of Benadryl. It's a big bottle. Family size? Yes. But getting through Megan, did she take it all? She ended up taking a lot more than what we had thought would take it. So, I so her, her number should be a lot higher. Results wise, you know what I mean? Like as far as toxicology. I'm assuming, yeah. Okay. Um, when she was cleaned up, you talked about wiping of the towel or something like that. Did, did you see a substantial amount of blood or anything outside of the body? She had she kept the shirt on, I didn't look underneath. Okay. Um, did you see anything on the bed? Blue blood on the on the sheets, but she, then she changed she wanted a different sheet, I remember that, so she put a different sheet down. So the old one should still be back at the house? It should be. Okay. So she tells you that it's not working. She wants you to suffocate her. Right. Uh, that was the gray pillow I think you kept talking about. It's a little gray rectangular pillow, yes. How big? Uh, it's like one of the ten pillows. Like, it's that right. Okay. It's a... Let's well, side the half of your case there. Not your case there. Uh, okay. Yeah. All right. So small gray pillow. Hold on. Hold on. I want to make sure I'm telling you everything perfect. When she changed the sheet, she put a bunch of sheets on the a bunch of stuff that was wet on the um, bathroom floor, and later on I cleaned up and threw that away. So the original sheet. Is there? I threw it away. Uh, okay. Threw it away or washed it? I threw it away. Okay. So any of the sheets that were like found in like the washer dryer or anything like that, are they related at all? I didn't do any wash, I don't think. You haven't done any laundry since Christmas? No. Okay. I don't believe I did. Okay. I'm just going to throw that sheet away because that was like, that was so bad. That sheet was so bad. Okay. All right. Um... So, go on, proceed. Sorry. It's okay. So then it, it came to me, and Megan asked that I wait a day or two to make sure everything had right passed, make sure the house was all set and that kind of stuff, and it's on. So that's what I did. I tried, started, I started the Benadryl. I tried hanging myself. The so Benadryl you had to go buy more of? Correct. And that was where? I went to CBS 24 Hours, I went to Publix, and I went to Walgreens. 
there's one across by the Starbucks. That's like CBS. CBS. So you went there. Mm-hmm. The Publix is right there off of Blake, which mm-hmm. is right there in front of Celebration. And the other one is where? There's a one wall that's right next to Five Guys in the restaurant thing there. Oh, the new area. It was yes. Okay. And this was the day after or so, or when did you start purchasing more vintage rum? Not the day after or so, yeah. Did you purchase anything else besides Benadryl? Alcohol. What kind? Um, rum. And some more, um, cold blood. Sour wine. That's the one, the red one or something? It's rum, yeah. Okay. And I also thought that it might be easier. See, we didn't, I'm not much about guns in the house, but I was reading on Quora that you could kill yourself with a pellet gun. Pellet gun? It hurt. Where did you shoot yourself? In the liver and the heart. I have two wounds. The liver and the heart. The liver the first time. I bled quite a bit. Didn't do anything, but I woke up later on. And we'll have to check that out, but we'll photograph it later. The mark's still there? I, I haven't looked at the card, I'm sure so it's out. been forever. Okay. Um, that was the last one. I tried the razor blade to the radio artery, which I told you I hit, but they didn't do it well in the, um, they didn't do it in the tub. So dry up. Um, zip tie around the neck. The only thing that did was irritate my, my claws. I couldn't get down the carotid artery because my neck is too big. So I tried to substitute that in with the um, towels with pressure points along the carotid arteries. I tried to um, set up hanging over the edge of the beds. I um, was trying to figure out how to go through and fall on the knife in the right direction to get it upward, up into my, until my knife was, to get my, um, what should we call it, um, diaphragm. Um, was also researching, but couldn't quite get to the femoral artery because the way the, how deep the femoral artery was. Mm-hmm. Where were you doing your research at? The internet. Well, I mean, um, what device? Uh, Meg's phone and my phone. Meg's phone. Okay, and which phone? Because I know you said you had two. Uh, hers is 6465, and that is, um, I think she had a pink case to it. Okay. Which phone was lost? My 6536 one, a Samsung. Um, and that one was lost before Christmas. And where was that one lost at? It was lost in Florida. I don't know where I lost it from uh, the airport town. Okay. That was the Samsung? I think yeah, the Galaxy 10. No, or something? Galaxy Note 10. Okay. Which phone was left in a, like a Starbucks or something in Sarasota? That one was that phone that was mine. Um, and I drove it from, got, went back and got it. Which phone? I don't know the number. You don't know if it was an iPhone or a Droid? It was an iPhone. It was the your iPhone that yeah. you have now? It's still yeah. the same, same phone? Yeah. Okay. So you went back and got it. And I can't remember, was that when the family was still alive that you went down there to Sarasota? No. They were already dead? Mm-hmm. Okay. And you drove the, the van, the, sure. the red van down there? Mm-hmm. Was there ever a white van or something involved? Was there a moving van or did it appear you guys were moving at some point? Like moving out of that residence? That was just how what people were saying. I don't know how to the truth behind it. No. Okay. Prior to the deaths, I mean, were you guys planning on moving out of that home? Prior to the deaths. Um, we had planned to... Uh, I don't know. Okay, so like, did you ever get a rental truck or anything like that? Or, yeah, they went. Did, 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 but, but when you guys moved in, right? Like, or when? Like, May. May? About 2019? Yes. Okay. So... Somebody had said they saw like a moving truck or something out nearby on the residence near the, near the house recently. Was it us? Okay. All right. That's fine. No, was it us? So people were calling in and see people were saying, oh yeah, it looked like they were moving out or something like that. So, mm-hmm. okay. So you guys know how to move a moving truck. All right. Mm-hmm. On to the next thing. Sorry. Um, so you drove down to Sarasota, left your iPhone at a Starbucks. Did they call you, or how, or how did that go about? Did you call it, or what? How did you get your phone back? I was leaving, 
then turn around. I realized, I started going. I turned around and went back. Okay. Um, what were you telling family during this this time frame, like around the deaths and after the deaths? That were either uh, vacationing at the beach, or I was looking at 50 prices to purchase. Who were you communicating with? Sisters and mom. Your sisters? Which sisters? Kelly? I wasn't communicating with Chrissy anymore. Is that Chrissy or Christy? Chrissy. Chrissy. Do you want to talk with her anymore? When's the last time you talked with Chrissy? A few weeks back. I don't know the date. It was... I really don't know. What did you guys talk about? Um, I was pissed off that she wouldn't stay out of my business. Oh, okay. How about your last conversation with your mom? That we were going to eventually be coming up and talk about moving up north, that kind of stuff, just to suffice her and calm her down. Okay. You talk to your dad lately? No, I don't think so. When's the last time you talked with him? Probably I don't know. I really don't know. Do you guys have a good relationship, or...? You have a decent relationship. How about you and your mom? We're uh, not very close, and that's why I had to really be... really be evasive with her. Could she tell that maybe you were being evasive? She could, that's why I had to reinforce the fact that... I was trying not to be. Okay. Your sisters? My sisters just... they love me. And they have a sixth sense. They do love you. I struggle with them. Yeah. I struggle with your family. All right. So Meg's dead. You come back from Sarasota. We were trying to establish a better timeline before approximately when she was taken, when, when Meg died. And you're adamant that all this all took place before Christmas? Yes. Positive, 100%. Yeah, before Christmas. communicated with anybody after that? Has anybody texted you? Have you been using any of the other devices? Anything like that? Using the devices to text people, yes. And that's... Why'd you do that? Keep people away so I could finish myself. Gotcha. I was in a panic mode that I needed to... I need... I still need to get to them. Yeah. I still have to get to them. Yeah. And... People getting closer and closer... And I know people said that they were communicating with what they thought were your family members, mm -hmm. and ultimately it wasn't. No, it was me. It was you. Yep. The zip ties and the knives and the research and everything. How could it didn't work? Zip ties didn't work because I couldn't get enough compression on it. The knife, because in all honesty, I chickened out and cowered it out with a knife. Okay. I've tried, I've taken so much Benadryl, then I took this, and I've taken the alcohol to Benadryl, and every time I seemed to live a little bit closer, closer, closer. There was one day, somehow I woke up in the garage, um, in my urine and whatnot, um, and I had thought I died back then, I died then, oh. and didn't, so. Okay, and we're... How quick after did you move? You said you wanted the, the family to be together, mm -hmm. right? So take me through how how does this take place? How, how does because when they were all killed, they were all in different positions inside the home. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what happens? The first day I, lay, I just laid in bed with Meg. The first day after she she died, just laid in bed, um, just with her. Um, I want to say it was the second day after she died. I said, okay, time to get things moving and get everything going. And we 
coming in and made sure she was covered and we were taking care of her. I remember her left leg had fallen off the bed, which was kind of weird. So I was able to move her left leg up and tuck her leg underneath, tuck her leg underneath to get her nice and comfortable. Moved Zoe in, put Zoe in. Um, before all this was done, we had all those, we had the kids bringing all those little, those little altar things. Okay. There, there were like favorite items or something? Yes. Like that. Okay. So I had to fix those because I knocked those over. That's right, put Zoe up. Okay. Then, so I fixed all that. And then it was a, which one do I do first? So I bring Tyler over, or do I up, or do I bring Alex up? And I thought just because of the, you know, by strength, and I, I wasn't too strong at the time right there. So I should get Tyler upstairs. Tyler from, he was the one that was downstairs. He was the one downstairs. He's 11. He's 11, yes. Okay. So I was able to get him up on my shoulders and carry him up a little bit, a little bit by little bit. Okay. Then to back up a little bit, I want to get, I want to speak about Zoe. Yes. So Zoe was in her bed. Correct. Had you checked, because Ritter was kind of, Ritter Mortis was brought in, but you talked about it. Yeah. Did you check on her periodically to see when she'd come out? I hadn't. No, I hadn't checked on her periodically. I just knew she was in here. Um, just because I went to go. I went to position her. So, in my mind, she had to stay warm. Okay. And her arms were outside, so I went to put her arms down to make her nice and comfortable. And I couldn't move her arms down. It's like, okay, she's still on right So I brought the blanket above her just so that she'd be warm until I was able to reposition her. And when you say reposition her, when you're, when you're doing all this, is this still while she's in her bed, or did you already moved her to your bed? She's still in her bed. Still in her bed? Yes. Okay. So when she's movable, yes. and under the blankets and everything, at that point is when you moved her to be in bed with Megan? Correct. I, I, I upped the, um, the sort of sheet. Mm -hmm. I scrunched it together and carried her in my arms and laid her flat, made sure her head was comfortable on the pillow, and put her, let her sit there, because I had to pick up everything and knock over. Okay. And, and her head, because I understand that she was at the foot of the bed. That's correct. Right? So she's laying like this, left to right, Meg's laying like this. Is her head towards Megan's side of the bed or your side of the bed? The head is towards my side of the bed. Okay. Her feet are towards. And you slept, if you're looking at the bed on the left side of the bed, Megan slept on the right side of the bed? Yes. Okay. So her head's on your side, left side of the bed, mm -hmm. positioned feet towards Megan. Correct. All right. Wrapped up in a blanket. Correct. All right. Okay. So Tyler's next. Mm -hmm. Tyler is downstairs. Correct. You said that um, you were able to get him eventually upstairs to mm -hmm. the room. So how do you do that? What happens? I moved his mattress from his bedroom because he wasn't on his mattress. Okay. Moved his mattress from his bedroom and put it on the floor. His bedroom upstairs? Correct. Okay. Then pick him up and just carry him up at a time. His items or trinkets or whatever you call them were already in, the, in your bedroom? Mm-hmm. And what did he? What specifically did he want to bring with him? He wanted the scarf, the soccer scarf. Soccer scarf. Yep. And what team was that from? That was from the Team USA versus Canada game that we went to a couple weeks prior. Okay. Team USA. Okay. Did you position that on his body? No, I positioned it on the on the toy box itself. On the toy box. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, you said something about um, your daughter's hands. What did you put in her hands? A uh, set of rosaries, I think. set of rosaries? Mm hmm How about Tyler? It was some kind of religious aspect, whether it be rosaries or some kind of um, something along that lines. Now, did you guys already have these items? Those are mine from collections growing up. Growing up. All right. Did you grow up in a church? I was a forced Catholic, yes. Forced Catholic, yes. Okay. Understood. Okay. So Tyler gets a set of rosaries. Mm -hmm. How is he positioned? He is on his, when I put him on, he is on his, like, towards his stomach, with his head towards the side. I just can't remember which. His head was facing, I think, back to the back of the wall, back of the building, I'm sure. Back, okay. Is he on his face? Is he on his side? How is his face? He's on his side. Yeah, his face is like, it's, it's more so like right here. Okay. All right. Um... And then that leaves Alex. So take me through that. 
That one's tough because I had to get the mattress out from underneath them because I couldn't drag them on the mattress. So it took the blanket, this, uh, this comfort blanket, put it on the ground and we moved them to the ground. So moved the mattress into the room. How did you move it to the ground? What do you mean? Picked them up and put them on top of the comforter that was on the bed. I put the comforter on the ground so he wouldn't be laying on the rug. Put that on the ground. Put him on the ground. Brought the mattress into the room. Made sure the mattress was set and then put him on the... Did you have to like drag him by the comforter or did you pick him up or how does this work? I moved, I moved the sheet and the... Okay. I put the comforter on the bed, then I took the sheet, I took the sheet up with him, okay. and put it onto the, onto the blanket, the, the comforter. Mm -hmm. Moved the bare mattress into the room, mm -hmm. so I was able to pick him up and take him. I was adamant I did not want to drag him, he was my son, I did not want to drag him. Um, so I picked him up as the best I could, a little steps at a time I got him through. So you carried him? Mm -hmm. Carried all the children? Yeah. That's just something that you wanted to do as a parent. Versus dragging them? Right. Yeah, I don't, yeah, I, I, the ultimate respect to them, I understand we have different opinions about it, but the ultimate respect. I can see it. Do oh, okay. you want to drag them like a piece of No, no, it's just me. Absolutely. Okay. So you get him positioned, you get Alan positioned um, on the mattress. Which way is he positioned? He's on his side. Um, okay. Moving up to our bed. Where do you go? I think he's looking up towards us. It's on one side or the other. I'm pretty sure he's facing up to his bed. Okay. Okay. Because I know one of the boys was almost face down when he was found, and one was on his side, like you just described Tyler was. So I was wondering maybe if Alec. If any of them were uh, closer to face down, that would have been Tyler. And Tyler was closer to the to the bed next to your wife? No, Tyler was the last one. Okay, so Tyler was the one closest, or the farthest away from the bed. Correct. Alright. So Meg, Zoe. I'm sorry. Alan. Yeah. Tyler. Correct. Okay. You good? Yeah, I have a burn. You need a... Uh, yeah, can I have a tissue? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Okay. You're good. 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 You're I mean, it wouldn't have been a bad idea. Every guy on it, 
it's one of those, oh, it'll happen this way, it'll do it this way. Sometimes I, when I took the Benadryl, I seriously went to sleep for like two days. It seemed like two days later, you know. And Where would you sleep at? Either next to Megan, uh, in the attempt, or somewhere in that room. Sometimes right on the edge, uh, on the floor down there, okay. uh, between the bed and the, um, the window. And every time I said, well, let's try it, and it's like, well, now I gotta depend on that for three places to get done quicker. And then the tower was on during this time frame? Yes. Where'd you guys keep the temperature? Do you remember? I don't, but I want to say, because I was in charge of it, because those over there were 68. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Up in the room, I think there was like some. I don't know if they were humidifiers, I don't know if they were moisture or yeah, what those. Are, those are air purifiers. Air purifiers. Mm -hmm. Were those there prior to? The white one in the by the window was there because we kept the air purifier going because we both have heavy allergies. The black one I brought in from uh, the blue room just to keep going. Then we use candles and that kind of stuff and I did sage smudges and that kind of stuff. For what? So you just just allow for spirits to pass on and that kind of stuff. So I wanted to make sure no one carried the kept stuff. Kept candles for, for the same reason? Yep. So, it's been some time. We, we weren't found, or we didn't get there till what, Monday, which was, would have been the, what, 12th, maybe? 13th. What were you doing there during this time frame? We're talking over two weeks. Trying to kill myself. Were you leaving the home? Were you going over to the other place in Georgetown or wherever it is? I went over to the other place once because um, my daughter really, really, really wanted her Mickey Mouse, um, Mickey Mouse uh, necklace. So I went up into the, the condo to see if I could get the Mickey Mouse necklace to find it in the jewelry box. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find it. So she didn't get it. Now, was that the only time you left? No, I would leave every time I would be up until I needed to go get either more alcohol, more Benadryl. Um, and just food as we try to get as I try to get through this. Publix or fast food or a fast food. Unfortunately, but I thought I put it. Went to McDonald's once or twice. Okay. Um, Were you checking the mail? I checked the mail also. Okay. To make sure everything was, you know, bringing the stuff so that nothing would leave suspicion out in front. Okay. Deliveries. Bottled them this. in because I didn't want any, anything to be seen during my uh, being not successful time after time after time. To, yeah. Um. So there's like a pile of boxes and stuff like near the door. Were those like presents or what? What in the world was all that? Pile of boxes in the door. Yeah. So the people at the scene were telling me that there was like it appeared like almost like Christmas presents. Did the kids get to open Christmas presents? No, they weren't alive for Christmas. They were not alive for Christmas. Okay. By the by the trencher. So I think there was like packages or something like they were talking about. Yeah. Okay. So during this past weekend, the power was shut off, is that right? Sometime this weekend, yes, I'm not quite sure when. Okay. But recollections were, I don't really know, to be honest with you. Did you often sit out on the front porch? Often sit out on the front porch? No. Because the day that the agents and everybody were there, you were out, you were seen out on the front porch. You know, I don't know why. I don't remember that morning really, like how things matriculated. Um, I just remember I pounded the door. And just hours before, I'd already fallen down those stairs months before. So, why that? My legs gave out, probably because I was so uh, OD on bed or dehydrated, and I was peeing brown. Oof. So, I was probably just so dehydrated there, so whatever. Okay. Um, I don't 
I don't know exactly how I got, like I said, I remember the end of the door knock. So it was this fast knock, so, okay? So I came downstairs, and for something, something was telling me somebody was coming, and I did not know what the whole deal was. Um, but last, the night before, I remember feeling like the house was being surveillanced. You know, seeing all these red and green knots and uh, yeah, there were things. I, I, I don't know if it was, I, don't, I don't know what the cause of it was. Um, but I came downstairs and I opened the door and no one was there after the knocking because it took me for a while to get down there. That was the night before? No, that was that morning. Oh, that morning? Yeah. And after that, I don't have much of a recollection of... of except a bunch of guys coming in and I don't remember. Okay. I don't know why I was sitting on the front porch. Yeah, I guess you were sitting on the front porch and then they would make contact with you inside or something. And then I also remember seeing Megan out there talking to you guys, which wasn't true. No. No, I know, but I'm just telling you what, you know, it's like, so I don't, that's why I mean, I don't quite But now that it's been a couple of days, you probably have a better recollection of what's what transpired that morning. I don't have a, too much of a recollection that morning, honestly. Well, I mean, looking back, I mean, I can tell you now she's she's deceased. No, I so, she, so we know she wasn't talking. Correct. To yeah. yeah. So you, do you remember what, when they come in the house, mm-hmm. do you remember what you told them? No. Okay. All right. I, I, I don't. All right. Um, one thing that just popped in my head, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's a, what all, did, what all was purchased at the Academy Sports? The two nights. Were they the only things you purchased that day, or what? Uh, they were intermittent days. You did purchase, purchase that together? No. The green one, when did you purchase it? That one was purchased right after Thanksgiving. After? How about the other one? The other one... Sometime afterwards, before Christmas, because we're, Meg and I were going over what needs to be done instead of where and she made a comment to the fact that the green one wouldn't even go through me. So you might get a bigger one. I had to get a bigger one for myself. Okay. So there was like a, a whole bunch of items that, that appeared like they came from Academy Sports, like with a bunch of the SKUs, all the tags and stuff like that. There was like mm-hmm. a bag of stuff. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like some clothing articles and that type of stuff? Fishing of some sort. So we figured, you know, if we had time beforehand, we could go check out the two lures. And then I picked up um, the two pellet guns on two different occasions. Two guns on two different occasions? One, one yeah, two. One on one occasion, one on the other occasion. Okay. How many times did you frequent Academy? No. <laughs> Sorry. I might have gone there f- four times or five times. Is there a the clothes, in the, I know what you're talking about. There's clothes in the back of the van. We had picked up a bunch of clothes um, for Alec. Okay. Okay, because of upcoming events and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And we weren't quite sure when everything was going to occur, so we had a bunch of clothes purchased for him. All right, and... Did you know there was a family when you guys purchased that? No, it was just uh, my guy. The kids were home with uh, Zoe. During any of the trips when you were buying fishing lures or anything like that, were you guys with the kids? No. Okay. Color guns, when were they purchased? After the kids and they were dead. I'm going to see right before Christmas or right after Christmas or right that. Um, you using debit cards, credit cards, cash, cash, cash. cash. Mm-hmm. When was the last time you used a debit card or a credit card? So no, that I haven't needed to purchase. I uh, purchased those um, clothes on credit card. I remember that? The Bank of America card. But after that, we had cash around, so we just decided to use cash. All right. So prior to their deaths, you guys were already using cash. Mm-hmm. All right. You said you used the Bank of America card for the clothing? Mm-hmm. Uh, 
where's the guns at? One was underneath the bed because I shot myself. I was laying next to the circle underneath the bed. The other one, I found out was not that good of a whatever, so I put it in a uh, reusable shopping bag that's in the garage on the top shelf. Is that one of those um, bags that you bring to public or whatever? Freezer bags, yes. Okay, oh, a freezer bag. No, 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 this is just those reusable cooler bags. Things. A reusable cooler bag on a top shelf in the garage. Yes. Now, there's like a detached, are you talking about that, the garage out there? Yes. Okay, so the detached garage, top shelf. Top shelf, looks on the, yeah. Okay. Right. Is there any other weapons or anything like that in the home that was used to, used during any of these deaths or anything like that? I don't think so. So the two knives, because we got those. Mm-hmm. And the two guns. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, did you guys leave any notes or journals or anything like that? We left a note trying to explain what we did. Did you guys sign that? No, we just typed it up and printed it. It was already printed? Mm-hmm. Was it printed when Megan was still alive? Uh, no, I printed it after Megan was alive. We wrote it up together. And, and I just didn't print it before. Did you print that off of which computer? Was it a right. tower? It was a phone. Your phone was connected to a printer? Yeah, you can air print. Oh, okay. So that, that there would probably be record or something on your your phone of that? If I saved it. I don't remember if I saved it or not. Right. Um, what kind of zip ties did you try to use? Uh, they're about that wide. Mm-hmm. And they're long, um, pretty industrial. Where'd you get those at? Uh, Celebration Hardware. So like an Ace Hardware or something like that? So, Celebration Hardware? Yeah. Where did you buy those? I bought those not for that purpose. Uh, I bought those for the sofa because we have trouble with the sofa uh, keeping together. So I bought that for that. How long ago? Beginning of October. Okay. And then afterwards, I just looked at it and was like, this, I could use this for myself. Yeah. yeah. Um, we're, did you physically put one around yourself? How did you get it off? Walk into the bathroom and I have what my wife calls the industrial strength toenail clippers. Mm-hmm. And I was able to cut it with that. Okay. Where is that? Is that a tie They were all, I tried it multiple times. Mm-hmm. The pieces of them I kept in the box on top of my dresser. What kind of box? It's just a, a box, brown box that had soap in it. Okay. Um, and I just piled them there. I was trying to keep the place neat. So the used zip ties that were around your neck mm-hmm. are on a brown box. In a brown box. In a brown box. Mm-hmm. On top of your black dresser. Black dresser inside of your master bedroom. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Anything else that was used? Any type of straps or ropes or I had like that. Extra strap that I was going to use. It's a. Uh, Did I use or used? I tried using it. Okay. Uh, for a set of purposes. I hadn't. Gone that way yet? Mm. I was going to get the Benadryl and whatnot. Another you know, try. Um, those tensioner straps. We, we talked about those ratchet straps. We did talk about it. Yeah, yeah. We talked. You, you mentioned it the other day. I just didn't know. Okay. Oh, just trying to run two things. It's okay. I was either going to put it on the the hinge of the door, mm-hmm. put my feet against the door, and lean forward, or do the same thing up in the bed. Did so you wrap door. that around your neck? Mm-hmm. Like trip test it. Mm-hmm. What 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 color was the straps? Red. Red straps. Where are they at? Um, the the tension at that there. Yeah, the ratchet strap. Yeah, there's one. Okay, where's it at? It's up on my side of the bed, hanging on the headboard. Okay, so it's hanging from the headboard. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, we talked about a bunch of like homeopathic type of stuff, like some alternative medicines or whatever that you may have tried to use or yeah, you know, you believed in or whatnot. Um, one interesting thing that I had that was brought up to me was there's uh, arsenic. I know. Tell me about that. Oh, there is arsenic? Yeah. Where? In your home. If I want to know that, I would use that. So you didn't use that? No. Okay. Where was arsenic? It was collected. There's a lot of, like, old school 
medicine. I didn't know if maybe, because you had talked about the other day, your wife was maybe into like a little bit of alternative medicine. Yeah, she's an alternative medicine. So it was like thistle weed or thistle weed or yep. something like that. Yeah, thistle weed, yeah. What is it called? This something milk? Milk, th- milk thistle. That's for the liver. Milk thistle. That's for the liver. Mm-hmm. Um, liver detox. So did you know that there was arsenic in your home? No. No. So that should not be in any of the bodies? No. Okay. That you know of? That I know of. But, yeah, because I think that would have probably killed you. But I was trying to see if I could mail order arsenic. Really? I don't know if you. They had this pill out of Mexico, too. That gets through, gets caught up in customs 10 to 20% of the time, so I was even trying to do that. You also research that on your phone or a tablet or something, or it was a phone, I do believe, at that time. So that was that. It was that after the deaths. Mm-hmm. After that, I'm grabbing at anything. Yeah, I was gonna say. It seems like you're desperate at that point. All right. Mm-hmm. What are you most upset about? That I'm here. I'm not with my family. Let me see. Let me see the list here. Of this. So, I've been in constant contact with the family, with your family, your living family. Mm-hmm. And there's some things here that I'm gonna try to answer for them. Okay. Because there's you upset a lot of people. Okay. Um, and I'm not gonna get into your beliefs and everything like that. You and I both agree that we don't have the same beliefs. All right. I'm not saying, I'm not discrediting you. I'm not saying that you're a bad person or anything like that, but there's just some things that I don't believe. All right. Did you guys, since you guys seem very planned, this is very methodical. I mean, other than the fact about you taking your own life, uh, which I, I am still kind of questioning because you guys, if you had such a, a method and you've done your research over this time, I don't understand how you get to the killing of the children and then you and her have to take some time to see like okay what's going to happen here am i going to go first are you going to go first it just seems like to me that you guys would have a set regiment like okay before some of the children have to be gone the next day we're going to consult each other do this then you go first then i go and here's how i'm going to go now is it you you've already said that you chickened out but it seems like to me that you would already have a plan. Like, you would have said, okay, well, here, I'm going to use this knife or I'm going to use this gun or something. It seems like that just doesn't make sense to me. Okay? Yeah, I and I'm not getting upset or anything. I just don't, no, I just don't, I, I, I'm just telling you as it is. And I, I appreciate that. Did you guys have any wheels in place? We had a wheel in place some time ago. Okay. Um, I don't know if it's up to date. Okay. Um, it, was, it was made like six years ago. Okay. And uh, is, are you, are you supposed to have your parents go over things, or your, who's who's kind of left in charge to to take care of what you guys have, or as a family? I mean, who's supposed to step in? No, I so the rule doesn't say. I mean, you obviously probably weren't planning this back six years ago. Mm-hmm. You, this is this is something from 2019. Because that's the note on the the death table. Hopefully, when you guys have found us, and saying when you find us, this is person on that on Cindy, uh, Cindy Capto. And this is where the car is, this is where the um, um, life insurance policies are, this is where the will is not held Okay, so that note should explain everything from this newest development in your life, as far as the plan to take, to kill each other and then to move on. You know, that doesn't explain it, it just tells them where everything is. Okay. To contact contact uh, Aunt Cindy. Well, yeah, that's Megan's aunt. Cindy. Megan's aunt. Yeah. And what's her last name again? Cop- Copco or something. Her like maiden name is Copco. Yeah. Okay. All right. So some of this stuff is for some of this stuff is for the family. Okay, both sides. Um, why was Tyler saying he wasn't returning to school this semester? He might not have been going to return to school his school that semester because he might have been going to Montessori school. Oh, yeah, he might have been going to a different school. Okay. Why was Megan telling people you guys were coming up for Christmas? 
and I don't know if that's in person or if that was via text. If that was you telling people via text, then let me know. Or no, we, we had never said we were coming up for Christmas. They never told anybody? Not to my knowledge. For, for Christmas, or I think it was still down here. All right. How did the, and this is more or less for me too. I mean, this is this is something that they bring up. But were the children really that receptive to it? Were, were they that understanding of this pact from the beginning? They could understand to a certain point because they were children. Correct. Okay. I'm saying thirteen and, and eleven. I mean, I have some. They could understand to a certain point where they're children. And we explained to them, and wanted to get their feelings about the aspect of, you know, if mommy and daddy die, you know, if mommy and daddy take their own lives, uh, and get their feedback. And their constant response with, with a different excuse to the question was they want to be with us. Okay? And do you, what do you think led Megan into researching this? What was her... Oh God, the ridiculous amount of pain and the ridiculous amount of just... Or just she can't couldn't live. She had just recent miscarriage. Okay. Um, Tell me about that. Um, you had one miscarriage before when she got sick. What was that? Let's see, Tyler's 11, so it'll be about eight years ago. Okay. So she had a miscarriage. Where were you guys at eight years ago? We were living in uh, Connecticut. Uh, we just vacationed down here. You guys bought that Georgetown a while ago, didn't you? 2005, yeah. yeah. We bought it and then we were expecting it. Uh, Alex, we. Very good. Um, so we decided to go up to family to have the baby. And that increased family tension, to be on belief. Okay. Um, so, so she miscarried about eight years ago in Connecticut. Yeah. All right. Did she go to get any, any treatment or doctors or anything like that? She does. She, when she got sick with that major liver thing, mm-hmm. which is real over at the same time, mm-hmm. she started seeing doctors. We went to doctors up and down, thousands and thousands and thousands. Where at? Brigham, Women, Brigham Women's Children Hospital. We went to Yale. We went to Hartford Hospital. We went to uh, Bacchus Hospital. We went to... Was there any primary that she would see back home in Connecticut? Yes. Um, Dr. I... Uh, He's in Canada, Canada, Doctor. I can't remember his name. I'm sorry. Okay. But the other primary doctor was Doctor Kendra. Um, Kendra. Kendra. Um, We're at Waterford Crossroads. Um, what is her last name? I can't remember her last name. Which is like, I'm sorry. That's what I'm saying. Uh, uh, um, what city? Where was she at? Waterford. Waterford, Connecticut. Connecticut. Yep. Okay. So she had been to the doctor up there? Yep. Multiple. She had, multiple. Has she been to any in Kissimmee or in Central Florida? Uh, not until we came back down here. Okay. And who was she seeing down here? She saw a lot by telecommute. She saw... She went to a celebration? She went to a celebration. Okay. So they would have to have some type of records of her? Yeah. All right. How about the boys? How about, how about Zoe? Zoe, so they went to the Franz Center. Where? Franz Center. Is that, where is that at? In Orlando. Okay. Um, at Spa, I can tell you. How about dentist, specifically? Yeah. Where at? Uh, Celebration Dentist. Celebration Dentist? Yeah. Oh, yeah, right. Do you have it? Uh, my wife, no. My wife would go to Sage. Sage Dental? Sage Dental, yes. Is that in Orlando? It's right down in the loop. Oh, the loop? Yes. Oh, perfect. Okay. And I think my two boys went there also, but I know my two boys went to pediatric dentists. Perfect. In addition to Zoe. Okay. We're going to help us, obviously. Yes, please. You know what I'm saying? No, no, no. Um, okay, well, that's good news. Um, and the most recent uh, miscarriage you talked about, you spoke of, what was that? That was in September. September? September, yeah, around well, September. What happened? We took some time in the way in June. We found out we were happy. 
you know, went to Nashville, went to all that kind of stuff because the kids got back, everything progressing. Where I started getting sick, there would be a couple times where I would fly in and literally take the next flight out to come back here because she was in such pain. Things progressing, we went for an ultrasound, and it was that whole, oh, maybe this, maybe that, you know. Was, where did you go to the ultrasound at? The celebration ultrasound. Like celebration ultrasound or celebration? The no, hospital. Hospital. Did you guys go to like the ER or was it just a regular mm-hmm. or scheduled? It was a scheduled ultrasound because we started with the, um, Yes, it was, because we weren't sure we were going to do a home birth or not. Okay. Um, and because Meg was over 40, they wanted to get us into ultrasound just to make sure, confirm, and everything. And there was, couldn't hear anything, couldn't see anything. How far along? We want to say it was about eight weeks, six, seven, eight weeks in that aspect. Six to eight weeks? Yeah. Okay. Uh, we weren't sure, so they rescheduled another ultrasound to go back two weeks later. And then um, I flew back to Connecticut, and that was one of the ones where she literally called me, got a hold of me when I landed, and said, you need to get back here because I'm having a miscarriage, I'm, I'm hemorrhaging. Okay. So I flew back, and she had to believe miscarriage, and everything. Tell me about the miscarriage. Did you go to the hospital? She went to... Um, Her uh, nurse midwife, sorry. Nurse midwife, we're at. I'm trying to remember. I cannot remember the name of it. I apologize. It's in Orlando. Okay. But there should be some type of documentation. There should be, yes. And was there any type of medical procedures or anything like that at that point? No. Nope. They would send her um, things like go get another repeat ultrasound or go get, you know, or not repeat ultrasound, but repeat blood work to make sure her, um, whatever the hormone goes down. Okay. So she's hemorrhaging. Mm-hmm. She goes to the hospital. I don't know what, but tell me, tell me about it. What happens? She lays in bed. Lays in bed. All right. How, how long went you pass by from the time that she was hemorrhaging to when she was seen by the midwife? How long was she in bed? I don't know. I okay. right. Was there an elaborate story that you guys possibly buried something on the property? We buried the, the, the thing on the property. You buried the... The piece. Yeah. Okay. Where at? Underneath the bush in the back. Underneath the bush in the back. Okay. Where's the bush? Right by the propane tank. Bush by the propane tank is where you buried uh, this little thing. We said item under. Yeah, we burned it. Burned it. There we go. Thank you. Uh, we burned the ashes and then buried the ashes. So you buried the ashes. Yes. Okay. So this will be your house, Tony. Correct. That's your pulp. Yes. Okay. Where's the bush and for painting? This is a garage. Okay. There's a pulp filter, propane tank is here. Bush is right there. Right here. Okay. okay. So we're in that area. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the propane tank and bush are right there. Yep. The bush is also behind the bush. Okay. Okay, well that answers that. I mean, there was there was some concern from the family. Did you guys report that? Out, or did you guys tell the family up north, your family up north, about that? We told some. Yeah, because some of them, you know, some of them was didn't necessarily know what to believe. Um, was Megan actually ever diagnosed? I know we talked a little bit about it the other day about possibly like Lyme disease or something like that. Was she ever diagnosed anything with the? Kidney pain and everything. Everybody can throw out all different diagnoses. Nobody knows what's going on. Okay. So she had drug-induced hepatitis. Drug-induced hepatitis. Yeah. And who, who diagnosed her or whatnot with that? Brigham and Women's. Uh, uh, ch- um, Brigham Women's and Children's Hospital. Okay. Where's that at? Massachusetts. Mass. Brigham Women's and Children's Hospital would have record of t- of some type mm-hmm. documenting her that she has. Correct. Okay. Um, 
Now, some of this is kind of getting off topic here, but I'm, I, I typically don't do this, but in this very I'm, extenuating circumstances, I, I felt that I should try to answer some of the questions that are out there. Obviously, it's been brought up that um, your finances are, are a mess. They are a mess. Yeah. Does Megan actually know the complexity of your financial mess? Mm-hmm. This has nothing to do with the finances, though. Okay, and that's, that was kind of my... This has something to do with the fact that because with the transition, the apocalypse coming to the end of days coming in the end of December, we need to make this transition because by the end of December, this is when this was supposed to happen. The apocalypse and everything by the end of December. Mm-hmm. Okay. How, how about if she would have kept the baby? Would you guys still have done this? This is what's supposed to happen. I'm just saying this. I need you because it seems like uh, when you speak about the, the miscarriage and stuff, that seems like it's a trigger, like it's a, a stress or a depression. It's a, yeah, absolutely. So do, do you think, and we can speculate, I don't know, I mean, to, what's done is done. Do you think that if she was going to have, because you said you were joyous, you were happy, mm-hmm. do you think that maybe that would have changed something if she if she were to keep the baby? With the knowledge that we had, the listening to even then, this is what happens. Okay. Your beliefs are your beliefs. Beliefs are beliefs. Okay. Oh. All right. So you were set in stone, there was, okay. Um, did you, was, was notifying the family prior to this ever part of it, uh, ever part of the plan or anything like that? No. Okay. Keeping it very private, like you said, you were kind of, you guys were a very private family. Mm-hmm. Um, you guys spoke of, you guys had a will together, did Megan have one on uh, on her own, did she have her own will? No. You guys just had a, a family. Okay. okay. Um, and this is more or less stuff for the for the attorneys and stuff. But did you guys have any life insurance policies? Yeah, in the insurance. Insurance? it's all in that box. In the all room. in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, your dad spoke about like Knights of Columbus or something. Knights of Columbus, yeah. Knights of Columbus. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you know what he's talking about. Yeah. What do you want done with um, the stuff here in Florida as far as the Georgetown properties and the, the personal effects inside the home? Whatever needs to be done. Okay. I, I, I don't be involved in that. I, I'm here just speaking about the, the deaths and everything, but I, I've spoken with the family and I said, listen, that's something that maybe you guys need to work out with, with some attorneys and stuff, but I just told her I'd be tired of trying to answer some of this. Um, we don't care. We want to leave everything behind. Okay. Because right. obviously, if there's photographs and stuff like that, these are their nieces and nephews and grandchildren and that type of stuff and, and loved ones. They want, they would love to have. They could have anything they want. Okay. Um, they love you. They don't understand um, everything that took place. Um, they're angry. They're hurt. Um, but they're gonna hold on to the memories and everything that they've had, and um, they want to remember the brother before all of this. Okay. So they looked up to you and they admired and everything for you. Um, is there any message or anything like that that you want me to relay to them? Because I will speak with them today. Just tell them that I love them, but this was done, the decision our family made to do. Okay. And not so bluntly, but... No, that's fine, that's fine. Um... You said ashes earlier. Who, who, who's the cremator? Meg was. Meg. Yeah. Where'd she do it at? We got a paint can from Celebration Hardware. Put it inside a. Put the ashes inside of an empty paint can. So the ashes are actually inside of a paint can buried paint. underneath. No. Nope. Paint. 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 P P A I N T. Paint. Yep. We put them inside there. Put a little olive oil. Put a little bit of um, sage and burn. Let it burn, and then when they calm down. So this little hole and put it in the ground. In the can? Nope. Just the ashes? Just the ashes. Didn't want to pollute. Okay. I understood. Okay. I got you. All right. Let me get you a little bit more water. I need to step out and um, go over some things real quick. You okay for now? As best we're going to be. Yes. Okay. All right. Give me a couple minutes. Thank <laughs> you.
That is short, but be tight. Um, so some, some kind of updates from yesterday. Um, so I had the unfortunate task of attending autopsies yesterday. Yeah. Um, it's part of my job. However, everyone is not easy to go through, especially children. All right. I have children of my own, so I often think of mine when I see other children like that. And, 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 and lots of stuff runs through my head. Sorry. Okay. However, some of the evidence noted and some of the injuries that were noted um, are consistent with some of your statements. Okay. So there are ways, well, I don't know how much training and education stuff that you have as far as in the medical field. I know you said you're a physical therapist. Blood flow, we spoke of earlier, right? Mm -hmm. So you understand that when a person is dead, their heart is not pumping. Yes. We all agree with the same agreement on mm -hmm. that. Which means that if there's an injury to a person, mm -hmm. like say a stab wound, mm -hmm. they would be able to tell, all right, if there's no blood that is being pumped at the time of that injury. Okay. Okay. Which would make that wound postmortem. Okay. After the person has been deceased, after the person has been killed. Okay. So, looking back on things, the boys. Yeah. Are you sure that you stabbed them prior to them being deceased? Yes. 100% sure. Without a doubt. Okay. So if a doctor, medical examiner, tells you that the wounds or tells me are done post-mortem, mm -hmm. what would you say to that? Absolutely is correct. Absolutely correct. Okay. You're firm on that? Firm. Okay. Because everything we've talked about mm -hmm. has been pretty damn consistent. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But the biggest things were, uh, she had some concern yesterday that, that it appeared, in, and she even noted that the boy's injuries, without a doubt, were, were done after they were dead. Okay. Dude, I can tell you that. Absolutely 100% because after it was done, they jerked and the knife went and I had to find the knife both times afterwards after I was done suffocating. Was the knife hit them as they were being suffocated? No. So we'll go through this a little bit slower taste before as the far as the death. Okay. Okay. Remind me which, which way died first? Alec upstairs. Alec upstairs. He is 13. Correct. Laying in bed, mm -hmm. you have the green knife. Correct. Do you have to, uh, in an, almost an attack fashion, or whatever you want to call it, I mean, I'm, I'm sure uh, if he's awakened, as my children would be, they would say something, or they would, you know, see me. Did you have to close his mouth at that point to keep him from preventing? No. The way he was positioned, the, the knife was on top of him, the stomach was totally exposed. I don't remember if he was wearing a shirt or not, but the stomach was totally exposed. And for some reason, he had pillows blocked up on his chest okay. where he was sleeping. So I put my hand on top of the pillows, with my left hand, my right hand stabbed, folded it out, and then he jerked. And the knife went flying underneath the square headboard thing. Square headboard thing? Uh, the book, bookcase thing. Okay. He started swinging and kicking the wall and that kind of stuff, and that's why I was able to get... Was your left hand physically on his face? My left hand at that time was on the pillows that were on his chest. Okay. So was his face exposed? Could you see him? If I looked, looked up a little bit, yes. Okay. So how many times does the knife thrust into him? Once. Once. And I can't remember which boy suffered greater injuries. Do you remember? I don't, I, as far as marked wounds, 
No. Well, it's like one on each. Well, one was greater than the other because one was more exposed than the other. Oh, okay. So almost as if it was maybe a, a slicing fashion or something like no, that. Something like this. How did you? How were you holding the knife? Like downward. Downward, yeah. Okay. And so you went in like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You wouldn't go in like this. No, no, it was like this because I was doing like this side. You were like this. You had his arm over the pillow, and you yes, his stomach's here, his head's here, feet are over here. Yes. Okay. Come right hand. Just your right hand. Your right with the right hand. I was yes. Okay. And Tyler, mm -hmm. what happened there? I was like just on top of him, and he came with him. I don't remember how I held up the knife on that one. To be honest with you, because they were getting in the stomach, I pulled it out, and in the midst of him kicking, the knife went behind the sofa, right in between the sofa thing. So you had to retrieve it in between each each kill, right? Mm -hmm. How were you holding it with? I don't remember how I was holding Tyler, to be honest with you. You said he was more of a fighter and, and that's He's stronger, yeah. He's more of a fighter. So would that be more of a blindsided thing? I mean there was were you quiet about it? I was quiet about it for both of them. Yeah. Well, I mean, gonna be, that's going to be some of the major discrepancies just between that. I mean, you're saying that was first before the killing or before the death, and then and the doctor's going to say something else. But other than that, um, you take full... You take full responsibility once it's done. Okay. If I commit suicide right now, I would. Okay, well, we're not going to let you do that. I'm not just... I know. I, I've made that very clear to everyone that I've spoken with that, that you do not want to be here. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm sorry, I have a different belief than you, and I don't just... No disrespect towards you, and I hope there's none towards me. No, that's what I meant. Okay. Uh, you've treated me with the utmost respect the entire time? Same. From day one. And I've done the same to you? Yes. Um, that's why I'm not hiding behind lawyers or anything, because this is what happened. I, I completely uh, commend that. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very tragic thing, but... Uh, you're right. You 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 you, you spoke the other day. You 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 walked to a beat of a different drum or something like that. You as a, as the family, um, absolutely. I mean, you're going to be judged by society on certain things that you've done and, and a lot of stuff. And whether you care or not, that's up to you. Even by your own family, that's fine. Um, they don't need to understand everything we did. Correct. Megan and I were on the same page. We knew what we needed to do. We did it. Okay. That sounds snarky, I'm sorry. You're fine, dude. No, listen, you're the, one of the most black guys I've had in here, I can tell you that. One thing. Yeah, go ahead. The other day you said that you don't tell everybody, family or friends, your beliefs and all that. Why is that? Because we get judged. You get judged how? Um, we get certain things like, for example, I'll... I'm trying not to... Well, you remember being recorded right this second? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Everything we've said has been recorded. Well, no, I just want you to know that. Will the family hear this? What family? My family. Here? Does hear this? Okay. Okay. So, let me say. Um, we went out looking at houses, and granted, we have different tastes in houses, different tastes in different decorations. This hasn't been. It's always a la la, must be nice, that kind of stuff. It always kind of a little down there. So, no, no, a lot of what we believe in people. They just don't understand why we go organic, why we go gluten free, why we do this, your wife. It's always judged. So we just stop telling everybody. Okay. I know that's the part of food, but our own beliefs, even the fact that we follow a very non traditional Catholic religion, we're still judged. We're judged. You're judged. Do I owe you? You know? So we don't. We don't tell people anything. Well, that's your... That's your beliefs, and you just sit by them, and I... I, I just yeah. said, I respect that. Were the kids happy? They were very happy yeah. with us. They were happy. They lived a very happy life with us. Yeah. Too. I do miss them. Yeah, I, I mean, I can't get, like, like we said the other day, I, I, I can't understand the children, but if that's something that you guys discuss, yeah, their whole life, I had it one now. 
these beliefs, when did, when did you guys start kind of getting into the, the, the beat of the different drummer and all that type of stuff? And was it? It's been transitional for a while. Yeah. Was it you or Meg that was primarily uh, I was more of a follower. You were more of a follower? I was more of a follower. Oh, more of a follower. Um, yeah. Well, unfortunately, uh, first of all, do you have anything else with me right now? Okay. Do you have any questions or any concerns or anything like that right now? Um, unfortunately, for your sake, we are still on this side. Okay. Um, you're not with your family right now. So you are going to be charged with their murders. You understand that? That's fine. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's a formality that, that we have to take part in. Okay. I know you, you, you may see things differently. Okay. Okay. Um, I will make some phone calls to your family just to kind of update them and keep them up to date. Okay. Um, without a doubt, the persons that we pulled from, from your home are your family. Correct? That's correct, yeah. It's Megan, Zoe, Tyler, and Alec. Okay. The reason why I kind of went over some of the um, the dentistry and that type of stuff is yeah. obviously... The composition. Uh, yeah, because of the decomposition, we had a little bit of a, a delay in that. The family does know. They don't know some of the grotesqueness of it behind it. I've, I've kept it kind of private between um, us. So... We're going to work on, obviously, uh, some DNA stuff and everything like that, and uh, and we're going to take it from there. Yeah, it's good. And I appreciate, you know, like I said, obviously this, this has been a video audio recorded every which way, uh, um, every part of this investigation. You've been highly cooperative. You've never uh, denied anything. The only discrepancies that we've had is, is post-mortem of stab wounds versus what your version of events is, mm -hmm. and that would be duly noted in my report, in my investigation. Okay. I'm not lying to you about there stop first. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, so just hang tight for us here. Um, I need one more thing. Yeah, I'm so sorry. No. You've been in the hospital the last couple of days, correct? I don't know how long I've been in the hospital. Okay, well, the, the last couple of days. Wednesday. Yeah, Monday. Monday, yes. yes, yes. Wednesday. You're not on any any kind of medication. You didn't get any type of. You need uh, something. Well, you you didn't. You're not under the influence of anything right now. Um, you know, you didn't you didn't get you didn't take anything while you're in the hospital that would alter your mind or your thought process or. They need me something. Uh, you're not knowing the day or week. You know where you're at, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You're at the Oxford County Sheriff's Office and everything like that. Okay. No, I don't. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Well, I just want to go back and say, oh, I didn't know what the hell I was saying. I'm a sound mind, and you know, that's sound mind. I'm okay. Here. I did it. Yeah. It was over with. What are you doing? Okay. So we said, uh, what we're going to do is we're going uh, to collect some DNA. I have some for your DNA uh, for some comparisons and stuff. So. One of the girls is going to come in, and, and I'll let you have a moment, okay? You need more water? Okay, just let me know if you do. It's, um, let's see what's wrong. 12, 53 hours. No, it's, it's, it's in the afternoon. It's daytime. Sorry, that's that military stuff. What you guys 12 52. We we'll get you this morning. We we'll got you like uh, 9 30, 10 o'clock this morning, something like that. Sorry. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. You're